My dear brothers and sisters, tonight I am so glad to welcome in our minister, Father Ezani, who is going to minister to us. May God bless him as he takes over in Jesus' name. Amen. We bless God. We thank God for his goodness. Happy Easter to everyone who is listening to me. May the name of the Lord uh, continue to be glorified in our midst. I will continue to praise God. We continue to worship God um, for his goodness to us. Uh, may the Lord uh, continue to show his mercies and uh, goodness to each and every one of us. Uh, this night, I will ask a question. What will our joy be like? If we are to have a surprising visit, maybe from God, or God sending an angel, his own angel, to visit us. I want us to um, go to an experience that happened in Luke chapter 22 from verse 41 to 44. Um, in that particular passage, Jesus, before his death, his heart was filled with sorrow and agony and pain. He went, the Word of God says, he went to pray and knelt down and prayed. What was he praying? He said, Father, if you will, Take this cup of suffering away from me. Not my will, however, but your will be done. And uh, verse 43 says, An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. So he is anguish and pain and sir. He cried out to God. And God sent an angel to minister to him. The angel was there for his strength. The angel was there for his comfort. The angel was there as his guardian. The angel was there to protect him. The angel was there to provide that spiritual courage and energy which nobody had. I remember also um, when Elijah was running away, from his tormentors, as he was running away, when he has he had given up on everything, he thought his life was coming to an end. He had nothing again, and he was hopeless. But he was to make this long journey, and uh, he was to make this long journey. And how can he make this long journey without food from God? And so, as he was sleeping, something happened to him. An angel came, touched him, woke him up, and said, Eat, that you may have strength and travel. And he ate, he was fed. And he traveled and traveled for 40 days non-stop. And so as we have gathered here tonight, I want to say to each and every one of us, what will be your reaction? What will be your reaction if an angel or suddenly God appeared to you and gets you the comfort you need so that you will continue with the journey of life. How will you say it? How will you receive it? Do you look forward to that? Are you imagining that such a thing can happen in your life or not? If this sudden visit Surprising visit were to happen in your life. Will you accept it wholeheartedly? Do you doubt it could happen? 
Or do you so much believe that it can also happen? I can be visited by God. God can surprise me with a visit. A visit I never dreamt of. Truly, I believe such a thing can happen in my life. I have had such encounters. And also, I believe it can happen. Maybe that's what we are, why we are gathered here today to pray in a special way. Visit my home, Lord. Visit my home, Lord. Visit me, Lord. Surprise me with a visit. Surprise me with the good news. I am waiting for the surprise, truly. And that's why I'm here tonight. That together we will pray that God, in a special way, can surprise, if not every one of us, but each, maybe one, maybe two, maybe three, maybe 50, maybe 100, maybe every one of us, though. Because nothing is beyond the power of God to do. So I want that surprise. You know, the surprise visit of God. I want an angel to come. To come to be with us. I remember this Psalm, Psalm 91 verses 11 and 12 saying, God will put his angels in charge of you. To protect you wherever you go. They will hold you up with their hands. To keep you from hurting your feet on a stone. God will put an angel in charge of you. That means wherever we are going. There will be an angel in that place. There will be somebody to carry us in their arms. Least we strike our feet against a stone. Least we meet our destruction. Least we meet our end. Least things don't turn the way we planned them. And so God says, I will send. Oh my God. Send some. Send. Please, Lord, I'm asking you. For all of us who are listening tonight, Lord, I wish... That will be this surprise visit so that your people will smile. I pray for that kind of surprise visit in the book of Judges when Samson's mourner had nothing or she was looking eagerly for a child and the angel visited her. She was even surprised. She didn't know who came to see her. And she was like, ah. Oh. When she went, she said, oh, somebody came to me. I don't even know who. He was. But he told me, you know what, I'm going to conceive. He was su- she was surprised about the visit. And so she narrated the whole experience to her husband, who said, next time he comes, just ask him, who is he? I, I remember that surprise visit the angel paid to uh, Zechariah in the temple. So he could be in the temple. He was in the temple, he was doing his thing, or he came in, he didn't even know that that day there would be a surprise visitor. When he saw one, he was like, who is this? The person was like, God has heard your prayers. I want that kind of surprise visit, the kind of surprise visit. That Abraham heard. The surprise visit, he was there under the, uh, under the sun or the shade or the heat of the day. He was like resting. And all of a sudden, he saw some people passing his house. He was like, it is too sunny. Can I call those people to come rest in my house? He called them. He fed them. And as he was feeding them, they are like, where is your wife? Where is your wife? And the wife came. And they said, you know what? We are going on a mission, but we will come back by this time next year. Your wife will carry a son. She was laughing. That was like, why are you laughing? 
And that was when the famous quotation came in Genesis 18:14, With God, there is nothing impossible. Amen. I need this kind of surprise visit. Like I am there, somebody is passing, and somebody stopped and said, and just come, you know, come into my house. Come into my house. I give you this, I feed you, just wash your feet, I take care of you. But as the person is leaving, the person looks at that which is the most pressing need in my life, in your life, and say, you know what? The Lord has said to us, by this time, next year, something extraordinary will happen. Even if you laugh at it. Just make a wish. I said, Lord, you know what? I need you to just visit me and do this for me. Wherever you are now, just say, Lord, I need you to visit me. Just tell God why you want him to visit you. For forgiveness of sin. For healing. For breakthrough. For long life. For protection. For God to vindicate you. For God to save you from trouble. For God to lift you up. For God to have mercy on your family. For God to do wonders in your life. Just say, Lord, I invite you. Come and do miracle. Papa, come and do miracle. Lord God, come. I invite you. I don't know where, how, but Lord, you know what? I'm saying to you, I need this surprise visit. Those who need this surprise visit, just say amen. 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 I need it. I need God to surprise me. I need God to put somebody in charge, to put an angel in charge of me, in charge of my need. In charge of my pain, in charge of my sins, in charge of in charge of my job, in charge of everything I do. I need God. I need you, Lord, to put somebody unexpectedly in charge in my part. Lord, but I know you can do it. I know you can do it. I know you can do something extraordinary. You can pay me an extraordinary visit, an unexpected visit, and then do an unexpected thing in my life. Something new, something powerful, something extraordinary. Oh, do something new in my life. Something new in my life. Something marvelous in my life. Oh, Lord, my God. Do something new in my life. Something unexpected in my life. Something powerful in my life. Oh, Lord. Do something new, Jesus. Send somebody in my life. Pay a subtle visit. Oh, Lord. Do something new in my life. Something unexpected in my life. Something marvelous in my life. Jesus, my God. Do something new in my life, something powerful in my life, something marvelous in my life. Oh. I, I like reading over and over again the book of Tobit. When Tobit was blind, when Tobit needed for somebody to help his son go on a journey, when Tobit needed a healing for his blindness, 
when Toby needed someone to recoup the money he left with another person. He was like, my son, just go and look if you will have or see or meet somebody from our own, a trustworthy person that could lead you on this journey. His son Tobias went out, and lo and behold, God positioned an angel, the angel Raphael, before him. At the moment, Tobit was also praying that even if he, if he wants to be deaf, God, let me just die. Another woman, Sarah, was also somewhere praying for herself. Sarah was praying for death because she was insulted by her father's slave girl. Her parents were also worried because their only daughter could not marry. And they had no grandchild because she was tormented by these demon as models. So there was confusion everywhere. They needed healing for their daughter. They needed a a spouse. And God positioned Raphael, and when Tobias went out to look for somebody, he ran into Raphael. He brought Raphael, they pleaded for a prize, and he set out on the journey. Mm. All that were scattered, they needed somebody to put the pieces together, somebody to gather things together. And so God positioned this man, just like Jesus was in that garden, and it was like, oh, this is a cup of suffering. Lord, not my will, but I need somebody to gather me together. I need somebody to say to me, don't worry. I need somebody to put things together for me. And at that point, an angel was sent We need this extraordinary angelic visit. Mm. Let the angel come. Let the holy the holy servants of God come. We need this extraordinary visitation. I need God to surprise me. And so he came, he led them on that journey. He led Tobias to possess his possession, which was his wife, Sarah. He saved their life. And so a grave that was dark was closed because the, the, the angel came and stood before him and death and said, No, you are not going to death. You are not dying. And the shame of Sarah's parents who were saved, their shame was taken away. An ointment was procured for the healing of Tobit. Their money was returned to them. And everything ended so well. The angel came. He led this man on a journey. He entered this family. Everything was put together. They continued on their way back. They got to their family and everything was put together. Father, I need kind of visit in my life. I need visit in my family. I need this visit in the families of each and every one who is listening to me tonight. Lord, we need this surprise package. Oh, What will my joy be if the Lord will come? What will my joy be if the Lord will stand out for me tonight? What will my joy be that if the Lord will come? You know what? God positions people in our lives. They come in. Into our lives. 
They are meant to be there to lift us up. They are meant to be there to lead us to God. They are meant to be there to teach us a lesson. They are meant to be there to listen to us when we talk. They are meant to be there to help us carry our crisis. They are meant to be there to convert us. Just like it was said, uh, or calling us in Acts of the Apostle chapter 10, he had this vision. He said, go and fetch Peter. That once Peter comes to his house, a lot of things will be put together. Peter came, preached, baptized the whole household. We need this special visit. The visit may be in our home. The encounter may be as we are walking out. The encounter may be as we are seated in the temple of God. The encounter may be in the hospital. The encounter may be in the bus. But I'm saying that God will surprise his own people with a visit that we never dreamt of. That God, who is all-powerful, who is in charge of the whole earth, the ruler of the earth and its fullness, the people and all that is contained in it, Psalm 24, we visit, we surprise in a special way. Are you having a legal case? No money to pursue it or prosecute your case. Or no good judge, no good attorney to take it up. Tonight I decree that God will surprise you. Are you having a medical case? That is beyond everybody. Do you believe that God can put somebody and inspire the person to attend to you and that will be a healing? Do you think that the Lord can visit you and that will be a healing? Do you think that the Lord can come to you unexpectedly like the man at the pool of Bethsaida? For 38 years he has been waiting, but nobody came, nobody helped, until this man came and said, do you want to be healed? He was like, man, I have been here waiting. I need someone to put me in this pool when he's steered by that angelic man, but no one. And so... Jesus said, ah, today something is happening. He paid him extraordinary visit. And after that visit, there was change. Do we need that visit that the Lord made to um, Zacchaeus' house? And after that visit, Zacchaeus was a transformed man. Are you carrying a burden in your heart? Are you having a marital problem? A marital problem. You don't know what to, could be done to salvage the whole situation. I declare this special visit, unannounced visit, in the name of Jesus. Are you having an emotional crisis? Who can help me at this time? Who will help me? What will happen? Are you having some people who are tormenting you that they are so strong that nothing could be done? I remember this Psalm, Psalm 94 from verse 16 to 19. The, the psalmist says, Who stood up for me against the wicked? Who took my side against the evildoers? If the Lord had not helped me, I would have gone quickly to the land of silence. If the Lord had not helped me quickly, I will have gone to the land of silence. I said, I am fallen, but you, your constant love, O Lord, 
held me up. Whenever I am anxious and worried, you comfort me and make me glad. Oh, is there somebody out there uh, falling? Is there somebody there saying, I am already on this downward slope into the land of silence? Is there somebody saying, mm, it can never be better for me. It can never be well for me. I am standing here to say, I dreamt, I saw this vision about God paying a special visit to you. And the visit will be that you may say, I said I am fallen, but God's constant love held me up. Mm. You are not falling anymore. But God is positioning something. God is positioning somebody. God is positioning an encounter. God is positioning an experience to save the one who is fallen. To help him to stand up. Lord, I believe you can do this for me. Lord, I believe that you did do this for me. Lord, I believe that there is nothing stronger that you cannot do for me. Lord, I believe that even if it has gone too bad, that you will help me to turn it around. Lord, I believe. I believe. I couldn't. I couldn't appreciate it. I, I trust that your constant love will be there for me. I believe that when I'm sh when I am anxious and worried, that you will comfort me and make me glad. Those who believe like I do, why not shout hallelujah to the Lord? Why not shout hallelujah to the Lord? Why not clap your hand to the Lord? Why not clap your hand to the Lord? Why not say, Lord, I know that even when I'm anxious and worried, that you will not let me fall down, but you will, in your constant love, hold me up and lift me up. Why not say, Lord, you will comfort me and make me glad. Lord, you will do it. You will comfort me. You will make me glad. I know that God will position somebody to speak for you. I know that God will also position somebody to reveal a secret to you. So that if you are to be drowned, you will no longer be drowned. I know that God is positioning somebody to help you go through your studies, your tuition, the loan, the burden that you cannot carry. What joy it will be. What joy it will be. Look at the life of Christ. A lot of people were positioned. There were women who were positioned to help him in his ministry. Before his death, there was somebody, the last supper, there was somebody who was positioned, into, positioned to provide the acts. There was somebody who was positioned to provide his house for the Last Supper. Before that triumphant entry into Jerusalem, there were people who were positioned to shout Hosanna. Even when some people were there trying to shut them up, they were, it, the, the people kept shouting. There were women who were positioned to cry for him on the journey to Calvary. 
There was this Mary who was positioned to wipe and anoint him with the costliest of oil. There was Simon who was positioned to help him carry the cross. There was Joseph of Arimathea who was positioned to bury him and give him a befitting burial. There was another Mary Magdalene who was positioned to be at that grave early in that morning to say the Easter glory that, Hallelujah, he has risen. And so we are praying, we are saying that God will pay a special visit. In ways, in manners, that is beyond human understanding. This extraordinary visit may come in the form of a neighbor. This position can come in the form of a total stranger you may encounter in a parking lot, you will run into in a mall. You will run into a Mr. Biggs. You will go to your grocery store. You go for shopping. You may even be walking. You know, it was too much. And you say, let me take a walk and see if I can get some fresh air to console myself. It may be a friend. Or maybe a long-time colleague. You may hear somebody talk to somebody, and talking to somebody, another talks to another. And then miracle starts happening. This visit, this special favor may be coming from somebody who is a recipient of your goodness in the past. It may be your spouse. It may be your children. It may be your parents, it may be a sibling, it may be somebody close. But all I'm saying is that God is going to visit somebody. Oh, that God is going to touch somebody, that God is coming to visit and bless and stay with somebody to comfort somebody. The Lord will bless someone tonight. The Lord will bless someone tonight. It may be me. It may be you. It may be someone by my side. It may be me. It may be you. It may be someone by my side. But what I'm saying is that somebody, because God motivated this message tonight that there will be a surprising visit. An angel from God will minister to us at the moment of our need to strengthen us, to comfort us, and to gladden our heart. To help us carry the burden to show us the way, to speak to us, to reassure us, to help us. Today, since today, we have been trying to help somebody. And when it was getting dark and there was no hope, everything we put together could not help. And all of a sudden, somebody said, I can take it up. I can take it up. When we were almost done and out, humanly possible, somebody said, wait a minute, let me make a call. And he made the call. And somebody said, I will pick it up. In your life, tomorrow, this week, next week, somebody can say, let me make a call. And that call will change something. Somebody can say, let me make a call. I want you wherever you are. Just kneel down. If you kneel down, you raise up your hands.
Maybe you're holding your phone with your one hand. You raise up the other one. If you raise up your hand, just wave it to the Lord. Just wave it to the Lord. Remember, when people are going on a rescue mission, if they want to save somebody, the person will be where he is or where she is, and she will raise up his hand and will just be waving maybe a white handkerchief or something to say, we are here because the person knows that the help is very close at hand. Just kneel down wherever you are. Just raise up your hand. You are waving it. Yes, you are waving it. You are declaring upon yourself, Lord, I know you are visiting me. I know you are sending or positioning somebody. I know you are sending an angel in charge of me to carry me wherever I go. I know you are sending somebody to be a comfort to me. I know you are sending an angel now to minister to me, to strengthen me. I know you are coming. I know you are visiting. I know you are coming. I say, Lord, come. Just say, wave to the Lord. Say to the Lord, here I am. Here I am. Here I am. Just wave unto the Lord. As you kneel down, just continue to pray. You are praying. You are talking to the Lord. The Lord, I know you can surprise me. If you need a surprise of God, if you need this surprising visit, just talk to God. I need you. He says, when Jesus was deeply troubled, he knelt down and continued to pray. As he was praying, the angel ministered to him. Kneeling down is like, mm. I kneel down to apologize. I kneel down to show my humility. I kneel down. If you want to lie, lie flat, lie flat before the Lord and say, Lord, I am passing through this mountain. Who takes me from the valley of darkness? Who takes me up to the mountain? It is you, Lord. But how will this happen? I don't know, but I need a surprise visit. God comes visit people when they don't even know that he's coming. Elijah was not even, he wasn't aware that God is sending somebody to come and feed him, an angel to come and feed him. He totally didn't know that there will be a Raphael that will be positioned by God to help him recover his sight, to help him recover his money, to help him set up a family to continue. He didn't know. Raguel didn't know, Sarah didn't know that her time has come for God to visit her until this divine visitation and a lot of things changed. Gideon at the wine press in Judges didn't know that God was visiting her him to tell him there is a power in you. You're a man of vigor, a man of valor. Mary didn't know that someday, that that day, the angel will visit her. And extraordinary, she had that visit. The family of Joseph didn't know that Samuel would visit them until Samuel visited. And the anointing followed on the head of David. God can surprise you. Zacchaeus didn't know that Jesus will stop and say, you know what? You're trying to look for me. I am coming to your house today. I am a special visitor. I am coming to your house today. And today you will encounter me and your life will change and never be the same again. Do you know that something great could still happen in your life? Over your children's life? A phone call could be made. Somebody can say a word. Something will happen. That God may send the people. That God may say it, the, the event. That God may say it, the occasion to which his special visit. And the miracle that will walk in his life, in our lives. Oh, send it. Send it. Do you know that the wind can obey the Lord? 
the may the wind can bring mm, the best of the earth and they become fit or meat. Do you know that a lot of things can happen with one just special visit from God? As you are there waving your hand and praying, just sing this song along with me. Do something new in my life. Something new in my life. Something wonderful in my life. Oh, Lord, my God. Do something new in my life. Something new in my life. Something marvelous in my life. Oh, Lord. Do something new in my life. Something new in my life. Something marvelous in my life. Oh, Lord. My God, do something new in my life, something marvelous in my life, something new in my life. Oh, Lord, do something new in my life, something marvelous in my life, something wonderful in my life. Oh, Lord, my God, do something new in my life, something powerful in my life, something marvelous in my life. Oh, Lord, Lord, put your angel in charge of us. The angel may be in the person of any person. The angel may take the form of anybody. That once we see it, we know that the hour of the Lord has come. Mm. Lord, who is it you who say? At the time of mercy, you answer. Or when you call me, I will allow you. I will answer. When you call me, I will answer. So, Lord, tonight, we are imagining what the joy we your people will have. When you suddenly stand up for us against, mm, stand up for us against whatever is waging a battle against us. Stand up for us against whatever is draining our joy. Stand up against whatever is draining our life. Stand up against whatever is frustrating us. Stand up against whatever is making us not to thrive. Stand up against whatever is preventing us from possessing our possession. Stand up against whatever that is destroying all we have labored for. Stand up against against whatever that we may bring shame in our lives. Stand up against us in the case we have at hand. Stand up against whatever we stop the door from opening. Stand up against whatever we bring an end to our life. Stand up against whatever will prevent our healing. Stand up against whatever that will stop our children. Stand up against whatever that will stop the success of the works of our hands. Stand up against whatever in heaven, on earth, in any human being that will stop us from being your children. Position your angel to wage out that battle. If you, Lord, had not helped us, we would have gone down to the silence, to the land of the silence. But, Lord, I will not go down. Your people will not go down. We will stand and stand and stand and live in the land of the living. Because of your sudden visit, 
your surprising visit and the wonderful thing you will do in our lives. Bring healing, bring breakthrough, bring growth, bring progress, bring peace. Where there are or hostilities, hatred, division, Lord, shut at them in the name of Jesus. Where nothing is moving, shut it in the name of Jesus. Where there is an obstacle, Father, divide the sea into two, that your people will march into freedom. May we encounter you. May I encounter with you tonight. Never be in vain. But something that will change us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. I invite you in my life. I invite you in my home. I invite you in my family. I invite you of my priesthood. I invite you in this ministry tonight. I invite you in all that we do. I invite you. Visit us, for my heart is open to you. I know you will come. And when you come, my life will not be the same. And you will never leave me without leaving a blessing behind. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Comfort me and gladden my heart and comfort and gladden the hearts of all those who have listened tonight. Being in that garden filled with anxiety and pain and worry, may your angel minister and strengthen us and change a lot of things for us. In Jesus' great name we pray. Amen. 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 May the goodness, may God, our good God, bless every one of us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you, and thank you for listening. Bye-bye. Amen.